NASA says this present time is the best opportunity to concentrate on Venus, the world. This follows the new disclosure of possible life on the planet. On the off chance that you somehow ended up taking a look at NASA's records from the 1960s, you'd see the space agency calling Venus a planet of punishment. At the same time, Mars transformed into our foreordained target. Such careful naming of the most distant planets wasn't uncommon during the furious space race period. The Soviet Union was focused on sending costly missions to Venus. The dreadful planet showed practically no opportunities for life, yet the Soviet space program didn't decommission the Venera program until the fall of the Soviet Union. Thanks to Neil deGrasse Tyson, we finally know why. Join us as we break down the declassified photos from Venus taken by the Soviet Union. The fall of the Soviet Union was dynamic in more ways than one, notwithstanding the reality that it altered the global direction of the world. Yet, the lack of the realm also sank various secrets with it. The fact that the Soviets had a significant prejudice for secrets, from running the most extraordinary intelligence agency on the planet to being mysterious about their extraterrestrial contact, means the former superpower holds different secrets within itself. Before the United States of America ruled most planetary endeavors in space, the Soviet Union was leading the game. While the realm has a long history of successful and unprofitable space missions, its greatest focus was on the interior, terrible planet Venus. In the Russian language, you'd see Venus as Venera, and hence the resulting name of the mission that spanned from 1961 to 1983. During the same time, the U.S. was busy sending its missions to the moon. So, in an odd way, the Soviets decided to use their resources elsewhere. We can't say that the entire obsession with the second planet from our sun is odd. Did the Soviets expect to use the planet's surface as a functional and extraordinary military establishment? Or were they possibly hoping to colonize the planet after searching for any kinds of life up there? It's extremely hard to say why the Soviets were focused on the dreadful planet, since they named these examination excursions during the Cold War. They weren't exactly forthcoming with their places and targets. In all honesty, all that we know about the Venusian missions is based on declassified and unarchived evidence. Even then, it's challenging to pinpoint what the Soviets were looking for and if they ever revealed the mysteries of Venus. The Soviets didn't land on Venus once, twice, or even three times, that's just simple. The Soviets launched 28 costly rockets to the stunning planet, and 13 of those entered the Venusian air, while eight landed. These complex missions had placed the Soviets in a leading position in space exploration. Sure, the United States of America was a close second, but NASA was more captivated by satellites and creative arrangements than researching life on planets. His focus on Mars came a while later, neither especially great nor especially terrible. Your history textbook may not tell you this, but the Soviet space program was the first agency to send a probe into the atmosphere of a planet other than Earth. It also had another heap of firsts on its resume. The USSR became the first state to achieve a soft landing on another planet, and it brought back pictures and sounds from the surface of another planet. That's right, the Soviets had their own one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind moment well before the U.S. So, why do we only occasionally hear about such achievements? Recall what we said about the Soviet bias for keeping secrets? That's only one of the many explanations for the oversight of the Soviet space program. Back in 1992, the famous agency was decommissioned in the aftermath of the USSR, and the agency had to be restored with new Russian identity, Roscosmos. A lot of its historical data was either lost or destroyed. This is exactly why we don't have a clear answer for why the Soviets launched 28 rockets into the Venusian atmosphere. Anyway, if we had to make the most reasonable guess, perhaps the Soviet decision to examine Venus was about cost efficiency more than anything else. It's not to say the space program wasn't concerned about the viability of the planet. They were looking for prudent water presence, the force of solar radiation, and the general qualities of the planet. Without a series of these space missions, it would have been nearly impossible to gauge Venus' high temperatures and thick atmosphere. Today, various cosmologists try not to trust that the shocking planet could support life. The temperatures there are high enough to melt lead, and water is scarce. Moreover, due to its thick atmosphere, the climatic pressure on Venus is many times that of Earth. However, these are extremely recent developments, 
and to overlook the USSR's contribution to the study of Venus is equivalent to altering history. As far as the Soviets were concerned, Venus was worth exploring, even if it was just to stir up the space race. You see, studying more reasonable planets like Mars wasn't exactly off the table, but it was more costly than sending probes to Venus. Everything just comes down to the distance from Earth to another celestial body. On average, the dreadful planet is only 40 million kilometers away from our home, while Mars, on average, is 250 million kilometers away. Such huge differences in distance amount to extreme differences in cost. If the United States wasn't the world's largest economy, it would never have been easy to study Mars. Various reports suggest that Soviet missions were problematic and had significant technical gaps. Of course, the spacecraft weren't fit to cover infinite distances. Also, the organization had a poor history of losing contact with its rockets, so it makes sense why the Soviet space program was choosing a shorter and closer journey that would yield results. However, if we don't consider the space race in this context, the story of the Venera missions would be incomplete. The U.S. wasn't even on the space map when the Soviet program launched the first artificial satellite, Sputnik 1, in 1957. This move intensified the space tussle and maintained Soviet dominance. Anyway, what's really interesting is the reason why the U.S. focused on the moon. Beside unknown factors, NASA had a series of failures with its Venus missions during the 1960s. So, the U.S. space organization ended up in a gridlock called the Venus Curse. Every time they launched a probe into the Venusian atmosphere, it went badly. This is precisely when the Soviet Union saw an opportunity to exploit NASA's failures. At the time, both the U.S. and the Soviets were determined to win the space race. The most consistent strategy was to exploit two different options. It was a quiet victory, very specifically. The Soviet space program seized Earth's sister planet as its most significant achievement in the space tussle accomplishing something that its major rival had forgotten to do. Despite the Soviet Union's limited resources and faltering government, it repeatedly launched missions to Venus to secure its winning position against the U.S., rather than focusing on NASA's center of attention, the Moon. This critical division wasn't without opposition and deceptive exposure. To cover their major failures with Venus, the American organization was prompted to discredit the USSR's focus on the planet in the media. Venus was dubbed the evil planet, while Mars became man's fate. These names didn't matter to the Soviets. Their mission was to prove superiority over the Americans, and they weren't unsuccessful in doing so. The Venera missions are almost forgotten in present history, but despite their outdated beginnings, those missions were significantly complex, advanced, and ambitious. In fact, if we had to pick an event that marked the beginning of the space age, the Venera missions would take the lead. Going back to the 1950s, the Soviets began to experiment with the design and technical details of the probes, and for the next 30 years, they continued to build and launch interplanetary spacecraft as part of the Venera program. Since the program was running alongside an extremely tumultuous Cold War, the Soviets were focused on optimizing their resources. Luckily for them, the early years of the conflict provided them with more actual technical work capacity than the U.S., this advantage turned out to be quite useful in developing their capabilities. The USSR began to collect and launch larger rockets designed to withstand high altitudes and long distances. The Soviets rushed to experiment with both manned and unmanned spacecraft, while the Soviet academic community worked on a series of computations and calculations to make precise directions for the Venus missions. In the background, their Mars programs were also running effectively. For the Soviet Space Agency, Nothing was more important than developing complex instrumentation for these probes. This led to the biggest breakthrough in the history of space exploration. In 1966, the Soviet agency launched Venera 3, making it the first artificial probe to enter the atmosphere of Venus and successfully connect with the planet's surface. This crucial accomplishment escalated the competition between the two superpowers. Unlike the American missions, which were laden with failures and gridlocks, the Soviet program continued to make progress. Despite the program's steady advancement, the USSR managed to send successful probes into the Venusian atmosphere. The most critical issue with this approach was limited design capacity. The Soviets quickly overcame their design issues and launched the most sophisticated rockets of the Venera program in the 1970s. 
Their featuring ability allowed them to carry out the first dual launches of Venera 4 and Venera 5. According to most historians, this was the most interesting decade in the history of space exploration. Without a doubt, the U.S. attempted to come up with comparable launch plans. So why did the Soviet agency choose dual launches to Venus? To understand this, you must recognize that interplanetary travel requires advanced instrumentation to gather. The most significant level of data and evidence. Of course, the spacecraft was first launched to study the planet's surface. This is exactly what happened with Venera 4. Since the launch went smoothly and the spacecraft entered the atmosphere of Venus, the Soviet program moved forward with Venera 5. It wasn't just a repetition of the first launch. The second spacecraft was specifically designed to gather new data about the planet. In this way, the Soviets intended to break through barriers of temperature, atmospheric pressure, and radiation on Venus. They didn't have to wait too long for their answers. By the mid-1970s, the Soviet program was entering the most advanced period of the Venera missions. Everything the USSR had done up to that point was about research and development. It was about ensuring that their designs and advancements were optimized. It was also about perfecting the techniques and mechanics of interplanetary travel. However, for the second decade of Venera missions, the Soviet Union intended to conduct exploratory missions. The best and most captivating launch of this period was Venera 7. As the 11th Soviet probe entered Venus' atmosphere, it became the first spacecraft to send data from another planet. The planet's high temperatures, density and surface pressures were already noted. At this point, the Soviets were trying to record Venusian sounds. The next major accomplishment for the program came in the mid-1980s. Venera 13 had outperformed all previous interplanetary examinations in terms of complexity. This spacecraft was the first to capture full-color panoramic images of Venus' surface. At the same time, the Soviet program launched Venera 14 to gather similar data about the planet's surface. As the Soviet Union was arguably the first country to find and recognize Venus, the Russian Space Agency has renewed its ambitions for Venus missions. VAD is a planned joint mission between Roscosmos and NASA to study the atmosphere and surface of Venus. The acronym Venerid stands for Venerid in Russian. It is expected to mean enduring and is planned for launch in the late 2020s or early 2030s. It aims to study the planet's atmosphere, geological history, and search for signs of past or present habitability. The spacecraft will include an orbiter, a lander, and potentially an inflatable to study the planet's atmosphere in detail. The legacy of the Venera missions extends far beyond their technological accomplishments and global ramifications. These missions, started by the Soviet Union during the height of the Cold War, represented a pinnacle of human imagination and determination in exploring the universe, despite facing numerous challenges and difficulties. The Soviets pressed on in their mission to uncover the secrets of Venus, a planet long thought to be hostile and inhospitable to life. One of the most critical aspects of the Venera missions was their pioneering use of robotic probes to study planetary atmospheres and surfaces. These missions paved the way for future exploration beyond Earth's neighborhood and laid the foundation for our understanding of planetary science. The data collected by the Venera spacecraft provided valuable insights into Venus' extreme environment, including its scorching temperatures, crushing atmospheric pressure, and toxic atmosphere dominated by carbon dioxide. Moreover, the technological advancements achieved through the Venera program had broader implications for space exploration as a whole. The development of heat-resistant materials, robust communication systems, and reliable landing techniques were pivotal achievements that contributed to subsequent missions to other planets, such as Mars and beyond. The lessons learned from the Venera missions continue to inform spacecraft design and operational techniques in contemporary space exploration efforts. Beyond their scientific and technological significance, the Venera missions also had profound social and political consequences during the space race era. These missions symbolized the competition between superpowers for dominance in space exploration. For the Soviet Union, succeeding in the Venera missions was not just about scientific discovery but also about demonstrating technological prowess and philosophical superiority over the United States. The global community closely observed each Venera mission, recognizing its importance in expanding humanity's understanding of the solar system. 
The successful soft landing of Venera 7 on Venus in 1970 marked a major achievement as the first spacecraft to send data from another planetary surface. This accomplishment showcased the Soviet Union's ability to overcome the enormous challenges posed by Venus' harsh conditions. In addition to scientific instruments, the Venera spacecraft carried cameras that captured the first close-up images of Venus' surface. These images revealed a rocky landscape dominated by plains and volcanic features, providing scientists with valuable insights into the planet's history and formation. The panoramic photos taken by later missions, such as Venera 13 and 14, further enhanced our understanding of Venus' surface morphology and structure. Despite their successes, the Venera missions also faced their share of failures and difficulties. Some missions either failed to reach Venus or experienced technical malfunctions that prevented them from transmitting data back to Earth. The challenges of operating in Venus' hostile environment, including extreme temperatures exceeding 450 degrees Celsius 842 degrees Fahrenheit and corrosive sulfuric acid clouds, pose significant engineering challenges for spacecraft design and operation. Nevertheless, the perseverance and dedication of Soviet scientists and engineers involved in the Venera program paved the way for future missions to Venus and other celestial bodies. The legacy of the Venera missions lives on in the ongoing exploration of Venus by space agencies around the world, including NASA's upcoming VD mission, in collaboration with Roscosmos. Looking ahead, the VD mission aims to build upon the achievements of its predecessors by sending advanced instruments to study Venus' atmosphere, surface topography, and potential signs of past or present habitability. The mission represents a collaborative effort to unravel the remaining mysteries of Earth's closest planetary neighbor and to expand our understanding of the conditions that could support life beyond our own planet.